In today's documentary, we recount the most haunting sinkhole disaster in America. 900 million gallons of water vanished from the map in just three hours. Over $90 million was buried. An entire ecosystem was wiped out and a freshwater lake turned into saltwater. Was it human error or nature's punishment? How did it all happen? Let's start unraveling the mystery right now. Lake Panure, located in Louisiana, was only about 10 feet deep, so shallow that locals would row out to fish in the middle of the lake without wearing life jackets. Nearby was Jefferson Island, home to massive salt fields formed millions of years ago. Remember this detail. In 1980, Texaco Oil believed there was plenty of oil here, so they decided to drill. On the morning of November 20, 1980, a group of workers started their shift as usual on a floating rig in the middle of the lake. Texaco's engineers were confident everything was safe, the maps, coordinates, and drilling angles. They planned to drill down 1,300 feet. The rig, weighing 330,000 pounds and worth $5 million, was set up right in the center of the lake. But then, disaster struck. At about 1,230 feet deep, the drill suddenly stopped. It wouldn't turn or move. Twelve workers tried to twist, lift, even use auxiliary engines to pull it up. No one realized that below, lake water had started seeping through a crack as thin as a hair. Suddenly, bang, bang, bang. The sound of metal snapping and rocks collapsing. Within seconds, the whole rig tilted to one side. Right after that, the surface of Lake Panier began to boil like a giant pot of water. Small whirlpools appeared, growing bigger and bigger until the entire lake seemed to be sucked into a giant mouth in the earth. According to physics, when there's a hole at the bottom of a lake, the water swirls and forms a funnel. Within minutes, water was flowing at 1.8 million cubic feet per minute. That's like draining 20 Olympic-sized swimming pools every 60 seconds. Sounds crazy, but it's a fact recorded by the United States Geological Survey. The entire two-square-mile lake was sucked underground, creating a whirlpool over 1,300 feet wide. Can you imagine? A lake smaller than Central Park in New York suddenly turned into a giant black hole, swallowing everything around it. In less than an hour, the whirlpool doubled in size, from 700 feet to 1,400 feet wide. Eleven barges, each over 200 feet long, collided, flipped, and sank straight down into the lake, as if falling into a black hole in the water. That whirlpool swept away eleven barges, a tugboat, a dock larger than three million square feet, and even part of Jefferson Island. One fisherman shouted, It's the end of the world! And honestly, it looked just like a scene from the movie 2012. What made Lake Pinure disappear so quickly? You're not the only one curious, geologists wanted answers too. Remember Jefferson Island we mentioned earlier? Hundreds of millions of years ago, Louisiana was under a shallow, ancient sea. When the sea dried up and evaporated, salt was left behind, buried under layers of soil, sand, and rock. Over millions of years, the pressure from above compressed the salt, which slowly rose up like air bubbles underwater. Geologists call this a salt dome, which can be up to 10,000 feet tall, several miles wide, and weigh billions of tons. In Louisiana, there are at least 128 salt domes, and Feinstech, and five of them actually rise above ground, forming strange salt islands. Jefferson, Avery, Weeks, Cote Blanche, and Belle Isle. One of them is the Jefferson Island Salt Dome, right under Lake Panure. Because salt is lighter than rock, it pushes up the layers above, which is why Jefferson Island exists as an island rising from the ground. Ironically, Lake Panure sat right on top of one of these domes. Above, Texaco oil was drilling for oil. Below, Diamond Crystal Salt Company was mining salt. Two companies with totally different goals, one above ground, one below. When Texaco's drill veered off course, it punctured the roof of the salt mine. And you know what happens when water meets salt? Salt dissolves 100 times faster than limestone. In a flash, the salt mine turned into a giant void, and Lake Panure above collapsed like a building losing its foundation. Back to Lake Panure, or rather not, because within hours, the lake had disappeared from the map. 
Eyewitnesses recalled, I saw my boat still tied to a tree and then both started drifting toward the whirlpool, like something was pulling them down. And then, they were gone. The lake's water really was gone, 900 million gallons, or about 13 million cubic meters. That's enough to fill 5,000 Olympic pools or supply 40,000 people with water for drinking, bathing, and cooking for a whole year. From above, it looked like a massive wound in the earth. Water swirled down amid roaring sounds, while trees and houses around the edge tipped over and vanished into the whirlpool as if pulled by an invisible hand. At the center of the lake, a natural gas pipeline exploded. A huge boom echoed, and a fireball hundreds of feet high tore through the Louisiana night. The flames lit up the sky so brightly that people in Del Cambra, miles away, could see it as if it were daytime. The smoke column rose so high that the Federal Aviation Administration had to reroute flights to avoid the risk of a gas explosion. Then, when it seemed like it was all over, seawater from the Gulf of Mexico suddenly rushed back into the lake, creating a 165-foot waterfall, taller than a 15-story building, crashing down into the sinkhole. The once 10-foot deep lake became a 200-foot deep brackish lake, now the deepest in Louisiana. Despite the massive property damage, there were no serious casualties in this disaster. Luckily, when the noise started, a worker quickly sounded the evacuation alarm. About 55 miners working 1,500 feet below the surface saw the signal and rushed to the elevator. Even though the slow elevator could only carry eight people at a time, all the miners escaped just before the mine flooded. But for the ecosystem, Lake Pinier wasn't as lucky. In just one night, the entire underwater world was wiped out. When salt water from the Gulf of Mexico rushed in, freshwater fish floated dead on the surface, creating a ghostly white carpet. Familiar species, perch, catfish, freshwater shrimp that once thrived were now completely gone. The lake, once crystal clear and reflecting the Louisiana sky, turned into a murky, salty liquid. The salt level rose to over 30 parts per thousand, the same as seawater, prompting locals to say, a freshwater lake in the middle of the land can now raise sharks if anyone puts them in. The reverse current brought in marine life from the gulf, crabs, shrimp, coral, even species never seen in this area before. Lake Pinure, once a symbol of farming and fishing life, became a bizarre natural laboratory where freshwater and saltwater creatures coexisted in a twisted world. Then came the strangest sight, giant steam columns erupted from the ground. Air trapped in the salt caverns burst out, creating geysers, weighing up to 400 tons and shooting dozens of feet high, like a volcano in the middle of the lake. The hissing, roaring, and hot steam clouded the sky, leaving people around the lake worried that the sinkhole could happen again at any moment. Yet it seems people didn't learn much. In 1994, AGL Resources returned to Lake Pinier with a new plan. Use the same salt dome that caused the disaster to store compressed natural gas. They promoted it as a smart energy solution, an environmentally friendly initiative. The process sounded simple, pump water down to dissolve the salt, create giant empty caverns hundreds of feet deep, then pump in compressed gas. But few noticed that the Chico Aquifer, the main drinking water source for tens of thousands, lay just above those storage caverns. Just one small crack or pressure change, and all the fresh water could be contaminated or filled with toxic gas. About 4,000 residents within two miles of the lake protested. They held signs, wrote letters, organized demonstrations, and asked one question that no one had dared to answer in 40 years. Will history repeat itself? No one could say for sure. But who do you think should be held responsible for this collapse? Was it Texaco Oil Above drilling for oil or Diamond Crystal Salt Company below mining salt? Or was it just nature? Of course, no one wanted to admit fault. Texaco immediately blamed Diamond Crystal. We were never given the mine maps. They hid vital data. Diamond Crystal fired back just as fiercely. No, Texaco drilled in the wrong spot. They mixed up feet and meters and drilled right into our mine. For months, both sides fought an expensive legal battle, each claiming innocence. 
But in the end, the Louisiana court ruled Texaco was mostly at fault. The company was ordered to pay $45 million to Diamond Crystal Salt and $12 million to the Live Oak Foundation, representing dozens of families who lost land, totaling 158 acres destroyed. Contractor Wilson Brothers, who operated the rig, also had to pay another $32 million in a separate settlement. Pause for a moment and think. Just a mistake of a few feet, or even mixing up feet and meters, caused an entire region to collapse, over $90 million in damages, and permanently changed Louisiana's geological map. After the lawsuit, the Jefferson Island salt mine was closed for good. Hundreds lost their jobs, homes around the lake were abandoned, and people quietly moved away. All that remained was a 200-foot deep lake. People in Louisiana thought the Lake Pinure disaster of 1980 was a tragedy that would never happen again. But they were wrong. History in this region has a way of repeating itself. And each time, it gets worse deeper, more devastating, and scarier. Even before Pinure, in 1968, the Belle Isle salt mine, just 65 miles away, collapsed. Back then, 21 miners were buried hundreds of feet underground. None were ever found. But instead of serving as a warning, the event faded into oblivion, as if Louisianans were used to living on the edge between life and hell. 44 years later, in 2012, the nightmare returned at Bayou Corn. Before the sinkhole appeared, locals heard rumbling from underground and saw gas bubbles rising, clear signs something was brewing below. The authorities reassured them, it's just a natural phenomenon. But three months later, the ground split open. A sinkhole over 330 feet wide and 400 feet deep appeared, big enough to swallow a 10-story building. In days, it grew to over 35 acres, about 20 football fields. 350 people had to evacuate, and the land remains abandoned to this day. And just when people thought they'd learned their lesson, in 2020 at the Avery Island Salt Mine, the roof collapsed again. Two workers died, 16 others narrowly escaped, even though safety officials had warned of over 50 technical violations beforehand. No one listened. No one stopped. Today, according to the Louisiana Department of Natural Resources, there are at least 27 unsafe salt caverns right beneath people's feet, and six of them are less than 100 feet from the edge of a salt dome. Louisiana now looks like a patchwork quilt of unstable geology, where just one drill, one tremor, or a heavy rain could make an entire village disappear in seconds. One small human mistake made a whole lake vanish, leaving a permanent scar in Louisiana. But sometimes these disasters help us see the secrets nature has hidden for millions of years. Lake Pinure isn't just proof of Earth's destructive power. It's a reminder that nature always finds a way to reclaim what's hers. If you found this story amazing, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss more mysteries of our planet.